Hey, what's happening? This is Lionos here watching TechLine and today we have the Yumidigi Z2. So this is another budget device that has a lot of trends of 2018 like the notch display, glass backplate, metal trim, pretty good specs for the price. But as always, let's take a look at all the pros and cons of this device. The phone ships with a charger, USB cable, SIM ejector pin, a headset jack adapter and a pretty standard soft TPU case. Design-wise, the Yumidigi Z2 packs all the trends of 2018 in one package. You get a display with a notch that I found to be pretty nice and sharp, glass backplate that makes the phone a bit slippery, a metal trim and a dual camera system. The phone is well made and I found it to be really comfortable to hold in the hand due to rounded edges on the back. However, I found that the buttons rattle a little bit. Other key features include a dual camera system on the front and a hybrid dual SIM card slot. Face unlock feature works surprisingly well, much better than on most of the budget phones. The fingerprint scanner works fine but there is a significant delay between unlocking and the time the display lights up. It's disappointing that the phone does not have neither LED notification light nor headset jack. On the other hand, sound quality using the supplied adapter is decent. The loudspeaker sound quality is not the best but it's quite good. Here's an audio sample. In terms of hardware, the Yumidigi Z2 ships with a spec sheet we've already seen on other budget phones and it looks quite good. In reality, gaming performance is kind of mediocre. Well, you can play most of the 3D games on reduced graphics but you should still expect to see some lag and stutter. For example, there is quite a bit of lag while playing PUBG even on low graphics settings. Finally, the phone gets hot quite quickly. If you have seen other Yumidigi phone reviews I've made before, you know that I praise their phones for using stock Android user interface. Obviously, there are a few neat extra features but in general, you get a nice and clean looking UI that makes the phone run fast. The phone does not lag or stutter and it just feels fast all the time. I'm quite impressed with the performance with this budget phone. The overall image quality is okay and you may be able to take decent pictures in daylight but they could look a little bit better. Even the daylight shots could have more detail and sharpness and low light picture quality does not impress. Portrait picture quality is kind of average but it is better than quite a few other budget phones. Selfies look okay but not really impressive. There is also a portrait mode but I can't recommend you using it since the pictures are way overexposed. 1080p video shot using the main camera is kind of average and selfie video quality is quite good. Here is a short sample. And today is quite a cloudy day but I would say that the lighting conditions are decent. This is summer cloudy not winter cloudy. If you want to see more camera samples or full resolution video tests, check out the links in the video description down below. In terms of connectivity, the phone supports global LTE bands and I found the call quality and signal reception to be pretty good. Finally, GPS is accurate and it gets the position fast. In terms of sensors, there are quite a few of them including a gyroscope, so you're all set if you want to use the phone with 360 content. I've done an extensive Bluetooth connectivity test since there were some issues with the Yumidigi phones before in this department. I tested the device with Anime BT260 earphones and I wanted to say thanks for sponsoring this video. The earphones have a nice minimal design and the earbuds are made of metal. Therefore, you can attach the earphones to one another using magnets which is really convenient. The earphones come with plenty of extra earbuds so you can find the best size for you. Other key features include a mic for hands-free calling, 8 hours of battery life, 1.5 hours charging time and IPX5 waterproof rating. I found the headset to be very comfortable to wear and most importantly, sound quality is really good considering the price of just about 30 bucks. 
Check out the video description for a product link if you're interested. Battery life on this phone is quite good, but I expected better results considering a huge capacity power bank. On average, you should expect to get about 7 or 8 hours of screen on time. In terms of charging, it takes under 2 hours to fully charge the phone with a supplied power brick. So we've come to the conclusion part and I wanted to summarize all the pros and cons of the Humidity GZ2 so you can make a better buying decision. So let me start with the cons. First of all, the phone does not have the LED notification light, there is no headset jack, gaming performance is kind of average, and finally camera performance is kind of average. Now the pros. The phone indeed looks nice, the build quality is pretty good, the device has a nice and sharp display, also the phone supports global LTE bands, and finally, I just love stock Android teaser interface and the phone is very fast on a daily basis. In conclusion, it's the usual case with the Humidity GZ2, just like with any other budget device. There are quite a few pros and there are quite a few cons to consider before making the purchase. I hope you guys found my summary of pros and cons useful and if you did, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow me on social media and as always, it was Lionus, thank you for watching and see you soon.